building soldiers for Sauron. Here's your look at the Diamond Select, the Lord of the Rings, Moria Orc. This deluxe action figure of a Moria Orc is based on his appearance in the Lord of the Rings Fellowship of the Ring. It features approximately 16 points of articulation and character-specific accessories. It also includes a part to build Sauron. Collect the first six figures to assemble the 13-inch tall figure. More on the Moria Orc in a moment. The first thing, though, I wanted to do is thank the folks over at Diamond Select that did provide the sample of the Orc that we could have a look at in this review. Following up to that, I'm going to grab my ruler and put it right to the very top of the Orc's head. The figure does have two swappable heads, but we're going to stick with the one that came from the packaging immediately. The figure stands six inches in height or about 15 centimeters tall. Now, I don't have a lot of the Lord of the Rings figures from Diamond Select yet, so my journey to completing Sauron might take a little longer than others. But at least we did have a look at a couple of figures in the past. We're going to, of course, bring those in now so you can see how they look like next to the Orc. First, here's what the Orc looks like next to the Nazgul, or the Ring Wraith. I still feel like the Ring Wraith could have been a lot taller than what they sculpted the figure at, but still to its credit, it is taller than the Orc. It should be taller than an Orc. And a figure that's slightly smaller than the Orc, here's what the Orc looks like next to Frodo. That is a fine, fine looking Frodo. Frodo is my favorite so far of what we've looked at from the Lord of Rings. But like I said, there's six figures that you need in order to build Sauron. We're halfway through the restaurant build so far as we only collected three figures. But at least I'll show you the accessories that come included with the Orc. Not really one that's going to bring us any bit closer to building the Sauron, though. I suppose we could actually look at the Build-A-Figure piece for Sauron. And like I said, it's not going to bring us any bit closer. To come included with the Orc, you get yourself the Mace of Sauron. And it's going to be quite redundant because, unfortunately, this is where we've left off for Sauron. A top torso, as I'm pointing with the Mace, and a lower torso. And unfortunately, no arms, unfortunately, no means to actually hold the Mace just yet. As you can see, we've still got a long way to go. But at least we do have ourselves, well, halfway through at least our journey. And I hope, again, that's going to get closer as we get more, more of these figures that we can look at here on this channel. Having, though, a look at the other accessories to come included with the Orc, it really is a matter of preference more than anything else. First of all, he's got a pretty sharp-looking sword. Ooh! I should never really kid about that. One of these days, it's actually really going to happen. But it does come with a very crude-looking weapon that he can wield in his hands. I do like the discoloration that they've added to it. So it actually looks like it's been hand-forged. And really just finding weapons and just finding materials really around them. Uh, this has a lot, good level of dirt to it. It has like a really rough-looking edge to it. And it looks like it, again, has been hand-forged. Now, this can really be wielded in his hands. Or you can also go the option of going with a spear. Or a staff, I suppose it'd be a spear because it's got a spike on the end of it. The spike, the point on the end of it, get the point, doesn't actually have any additional paint. But still, it's a nice looking thing that can actually be carried around. And at least, being that the fact that the, both the hands that come included with the orc are open hands, means really that you can display the figure with both the weapons at the exact same time. We're going to go ahead first of all, and let's just grab the sword here, or the bladed weapon. I guess that would be really the definition of a sword. And we're just going to go ahead and put that into his hand. I guess really putting it into his hand, you want to make sure you got the handle side facing the right way. That gets into his hand easily enough. And then we could do the exact same thing with the spear. Spear easily enough just slides into his hand and slide all the way down until you got, get about the midway point. And I've got the orc with both weapons in his hand. I don't think I, I think that's a little too much, a little overkill, if, if you will. I probably will just decide to pick one of them and maybe just display it. I'm even tempted, really, and this is where we go down the rabbit hole. I'm tempted to really get more than one of these orcs, as you'll see now in a second. The figure also comes with another head sculpt. Now, the heads aren't that much different other than the obvious one is that this one does wear a helmet. I would have to believe that underneath the head sculpt, like the face, or underneath the helmet, the face looks very similar to one another. But it's just a matter of whether you prefer to have your orc displayed with this, or you prefer to have them displayed unhelmeted. And in both the cases, I don't think you're wrong, really, because the head sculpts on both of them are quite good. Diamond has really done a great job not only of sculpting these, but painting them so well. Not only the off-coloring of the green that they've given it, kind of looks like someone that'd be related to Yoda. Yeah, looks a little bit like Yoda. But they've also gone in there and added a nice wash to the face. That really does fill the crevices and creases and really gives a nice additional sculpting. It allows the sculpt to really stand out and pop on the figure's head. 
To change out the heads, by the way, I'll quickly spin this around so you can see this one. I didn't want to take too much time away from this one, as it's just as good of a head sculpt, really. But we're going to go ahead and just pop. First of all, let's remove these weapons from their hands. We don't need to have the hands in there for obvious reasons that we're going to be looking at the figure for the rest of this review. Those are just going to get in the way. And potentially, I could poke these people out in the process. We never really want to wish that. But we're going to go ahead and remove the he head. I'm just going to remove it from the ball joint. Fairly easy enough. And then just rinse and repeat the steps. Reverse and pop that back onto the ball joint. And that's what the alternate head sculpt is. And again, just to bring in the original one so you can see the difference between the two. I really like this head sculpt quite a lot. Really, too, he's got a chainmail mesh that sits on top of his shoulders that if you wanted to, you really could also leave it off as it's completely a loose appliance. I'm going to leave it on for the time being because I think it adds some character and it also matches to the mesh that he has on his sleeve and in his lower torso as well. As you can see, the rubbery appliance piece that they put over top of it mimics the armor that they would have had in the film. Really low, like the head sculpt on this one quite a lot. You see? You see how one could go down the rabbit hole quite quickly on these, especially the idea of being able to build an army of them and being able to mix and match, taking different head sculpts, taking the mesh on the top of the shoulder, completely remove that. So you can kind of change them up a little bit so that they're not going to look like the exact same army builder across your shelf. If you may, say, buy a third one, a fourth one, or possibly even 60 of these. Okay, maybe not to that extreme. But yeah, the paintwork is really good on the helmet here. Again, the off-coloring is well appreciated here. I love the way that they've got the indentation so it looks like it's been hand-forged. That would be, a, I think, a very dangerous helmet to be putting on. I mean, it's very spiky. I've even noticed that, too, putting the head on, how spiky the tops of the helmet are. There's a lot of spiky elements, really, on this figure. More so when you get down to the lower end of the figure's legs. These prickly knee plates, for example... Uh, not that I drew blood, but I certainly felt it the couple of times that it was moving the figure's articulation around. The figure has a lot of good detail in going for it. One thing that they've worked so well into these figures is the layered effect. That really, if you do peel away the layers, you can kind of see a fully sculpted body underneath. And there's the original meshing that it would have had. The chain link meshing, I suppose. And they would have had the armor plates put over top of it. But there's a lot of really elaborate looking sculpting and paint that they've incorporated into these figures. Mostly rooted in more the earth tone, so you've got a lot of browns, you've got a lot of grays. There's a few little hints of red down below in the skirting, but it comes together really quite nicely. And it even more so allows then the skin coloring of the orc to really pop, the bright green that they go with here. Still, though, the detailing on just the arms alone and the legs goes to show, really, that Diamond is doing some really good stuff here when it comes to Lord of the Rings. I'm just loving the look of this figure. Okay, let's talk a little bit of, about the figure's posability. Of course, now that we've changed this head sculpt on, Head works basically the exact same way. So what it is, is it's a dumbbell ball joint. And what that means, it's basically a post system. And on the top and on the bottom, there's a ball joint. And that works so that there's one ball joint at the bottom and there's one ball joint at the top. So it essentially gives you more mileage when it comes to head rotating all the way around. And being a, a, enough clearance has been allotted underneath the chin. Yeah, easily. You can have the head looking down. You can have the head looking up, back and forth, and rotating all the way around as well. I would love to get a helmet like this. Maybe not necessarily wear it to the grocery store. I think maybe the cashiers probably may not take a liking to that. I think that would be a really neat one-to-one -one scale helmet to have on the shelf. As for the arms, getting outside my own cosplaying dreams, having a look at the arms, the arms don't come out at 90 degrees. A bit disappointing there. They only go out to a 45, 45 degrees. But still, you can bring the arms forward and you bring the arms back. Technically, as well, you can rotate them all the way around. I think the reasoning why they can't move out as much as they can is if you look at the top of the shoulder. I'm going to bring this away so you can see a little bit better of it. See that little spike right there? I think that's really going to limit why the arms can't come out any further than what we're doing right now. The figure does have bicep swivel right there at the top. The figure also has a double hinge on the elbow. So there's a lot of good articulation going on here with the orc. The hands rotate also all the way around to hinge those back and forth. The upper torso is on a ball joint, concealed rather nicely the way they put the armor plating over top of it. As for the legs, the legs split out comfortably, being that they did skirt the side of the legs like this. It means that the legs can fairly do a good, pretty good splits, even though you're probably not going to be displaying the figure like this. The legs go forward easily enough, as well easily enough back. The figure swivels all the way around about three quarters of the way up the thigh. The figure has a single hinge on the knee. Actually, correct that. He actually has a double hinge on the knee. 
no, slight, again, articulation on the top. And then when it comes to his feet, the feet move back and forth this way, as well as there's a well-appreciated ankle pivot. No toe articulation, but I don't feel like in a case like this, the figure really necessarily needs toe articulation. Wrapping things up here, let's go ahead and get the weapon back into his hand. Handle side in. Not that it really matters. I, mean, I don't think these guys are all that concerned about cutting themselves, but still, that's a good-looking orc. Very nice job. And again, one last time, providing again the orc is going to stand completely straight on me. Stay straight, please. There you go. There you go, buddy. There you go. We're all good. Let's bring in back, once again, Frodo, just again, to put things in proper scale perspective. I think they're scaled pretty good. I mean, you know, you would expect a hobbit to be pretty small to start off with. An orc wouldn't be necessarily a human-sized character. I think they've scaled these accordingly. Like when we look at, for example, Aragorn, hopefully in an upcoming video, Aragorn, like as a human character, is going to be quite a bit taller than an orc. So orcs sort of meet the middle area here. Not as tall as a human, but certainly taller than a hobbit. A really nice looking figure. Love the idea, first of all, that they gave alternate head sculpts in this. Because really, for me, as somebody that would be inclined to probably army build this guy, a secondary head sculpt is really only a bit of the nudge that I needed. And it probably to go out to a local comic book store and see if I can track down another one of these. Uh, and that's how we go down the rabbit hole. To update you as well on where this reviewer's journey is when it comes to Lord of the Rings, you can see advertised on the back of the packaging, along with the Moria Ark, is Aragorn. Down below, further off to the far right corner, there's also Gimli and Legolas. Those are the other three figures that I'm going to have to pick up in order to build a very tall, 13-inch tall Sauron, which is definitely something I'm interested to do. First of all, I like that all of these figures are detailed, super well-sculpted figures that they do look like their film counterpart. It's a little hard to gauge that when it comes to like an orc or ring wraith, but basing it only on just the Frodo that we've looked at so far, and again, the images on the back of Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli, like the head sculpts on all of these figures are really turning out great from Diamond Select. But yeah, I'm going to have to track down the other three figures. It is my determined goal in life now. I really got to strive for better goals than this to at least track down the other three figures so we can finally build the 13-inch tall Sauron. In a case that came included here with the orc, you're not getting any bit closer to building Sauron if you're in the same boat as me. You get yourself at least the mace of Sauron. So eventually when he does have workable arms, he can swing it around and start disposing of his enemies as of right now it's just literally a mace that's going to be sitting on my shelf a mace on my shelf until eventually i get the rest of sauron put together big big thank you though to the folks over at diamond select that did provide the sample of the moria orc that we can have a look at in this review comes with two different head sculpts again it's the only bit of the nudge that you needed if you thought to yourself oh, i don't know do i want to get into collecting lord of the rings and then you get that one orc the fact that there is that secondary head sculpt in there, it's like you would have to tell your significant other, it's not me. Don't blame me. Blame Diamond Sled. If they didn't throw the extra head in there, I probably would have just settled on the one orc. They threw the other head in there, and now I have to buy a second one. And then your significant other says, well, you, you bought eight of these. And then you just have to like leave the room. Sorry, you're breaking up. I, I can't hear you. And you're quickly dashing out of the room. Yeah, yeah, big thank you once again to the folks over at Diamond Select that did provide the sample of the Moria Orc that we can have a look at in this review. What do you guys think of the figure? Let me know down below in the comments section. And if you have been collecting any of these Diamond Select Lord of the Rings figures, what do you guys think of them? Weigh in your thoughts down below. Hey now, if you don't mind me interrupting any bit of your train of thought, if you are new to this channel, you're enjoying the content that you're seeing, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Make sure as well you're turning on the bell notification. And if you didn't get the chance to see my earlier reviews of both the Frodo and the Ring Wraith, they should be available. You can find them either here on this channel by manually typing that in, or you can also wait to the very end of this video. If you're not that, if you're a patient person, you only have to wait a few more seconds. The very end of this video popping up will be a playlist covering off all the terrain, the territory that I've covered for Diamond Select. If you guys did want to see my other reviews of the Lord of the Rings, as well as other Diamond Select goodies, you'll find them all on the playlist. Give that a gander if you have a little bit of time. Lots of stuff coming your way, guys. As always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.